Good morning children, welcome to First Step Sunday School. We're going to start as usual with our hello song. So join in at home. Hello Nathan, hello Nathan, hello Nathan, it's good to see you here. Hello Jude, hello Jude, hello Jude, it's good to see you here. Hello Izzy, hello Izzy, hello Izzy, it's good to see you here. Hello Violet, hello Violet, hello Violet, it's good to see you here. Hello Fletcher, hello Fletcher, hello Fletcher, it's good to see you here. Hello Logan, hello Logan, hello Logan, it's good to see you here. Hello Nikki, hello Nikki, hello Nikki, it's good to see you here. Hello Isaiah, hello Isaiah, hello Isaiah, it's good to see you here. Hello Portia, hello Portia, hello Portia, it's good to see you here. Hello Nathan, hello Nathan, hello Nathan, it's good to see you here. And welcome to anybody else who's watching. Now today's story comes from the first part of the Bible, which is the Old Testament. And it's a story about a man called Gideon. I'm going to give you a clue about what Gideon might be. Okay, it's a sword, beautiful sword, shiny silver sword. Now, Gideon lived in Israel, a place called Israel, which is where God's people all lived. And there were lots of groups of God's people. There were about 12 different groups. They were called tribes and they were called the tribes of Israel. And Gideon lived in one of these groups, in one of these tribes of Israel. Now, he was in the smallest of the tribes and his family weren't very important. And he was the least important person in his family. So there was nothing very special about Gideon. He was the youngest, the least important person in the least important family, in the least important tribe of Israel. But God had a plan for Gideon that involved this. Let's listen to the story. It starts with some of the enemies of God's people, the Midianites, making trouble. They used to sneak into Israel and they used to steal the crops, all the, the food that the Israelites grew, and they used to take them back to their country. And so the poor Israelites had nothing to eat. And they used to steal their cattle and their sheep, their cows and their sheep as well. And they did this so much that it was a real problem. Now, an angel came to visit Gideon one day. And this angel said to Gideon, the Lord is with you, mighty man of valour. Now Gideon thought to himself, I'm not sure about this. I'm not very brave. I'm not a mighty man. In fact, I'm the weakest of the weakest in the smallest tribe. But God saw something in Gideon that nobody else did. And the angel went on to say that God had a plan for Gideon. He said, peace be with you. Don't be afraid. Now, God asked Gideon to do something that was quite difficult. Some of the Israelites' people had stopped worshipping God. Instead, they built wooden statues and made altars to foreign gods, gods that weren't real, gods that weren't true, gods that hadn't rescued them uh, and, and looked after them. 
And so God said to Gideon, what I want you to do, your dad has built an altar and a wooden statue of a God that is not real. I'm the true God and I'm the only one that Israel and all the people of Israel should follow. I want you to pull down that altar, break it up and pull down that statue. Now, as you can imagine, Gideon was a bit worried about this because he thought he'd get into trouble, but he knew he had to do it. So he said to God, okay, I'll do it. I will do it. And so he waited. He wasn't brave enough to do it in the daytime. He waited until it got dark. And then he got some people together and they pulled down the statue and they broke up the altar. Now the next morning when his dad came out and the men of the city came out and saw that it was all broken, the men of the city got very angry and said, who dared to pull down this statue of, of our god Baal? We must, we must make them pay. And then Gideon said, it was me. And so they were very, very angry with Gideon and they were shouting at him and saying he must pay. And it was then that Gideon's dad said, hang on a minute. If Baal, this foreign God who's not real, if Baal is a real God, then he can take his own vengeance. He can deal with the person that's done this himself. We don't need to fight battles for him. And so the people realised actually that Baal wasn't the true God. He was just a stone or a wooden statue. And so they stopped being angry with Gideon. Now, Gideon, as I said before, wasn't a very important person, but God had a very important plan for Gideon and it involved lots of fighting. Gideon had lots of enemies. There were the Midianites, but there were also people called the Amalekites. And the Midianites and the Amalekites got together and decided they were going to invade Israel. So they marched their soldiers into Israel and they set up camp. Now God told Gideon that he wanted him to get an army together to fight against these invaders. And he said to Gideon, blow the trumpet, sound the alarm, so that all the tribes come together to fight against these people. So Gideon got his trumpet. Now I've got a trumpet here. It doesn't look like the sort of trumpet Gideon blew. Gideon's trumpet was a little bit different from this, but it made a very good sound. This is not such a nice sound, but I'm gonna blow it anyway. So Gideon blew the trumpet. Oh, he blew the trumpet and he sent out messengers to all the tribes of Israel saying, come here. Join with me to fight against these people that are invading us. And so the different tribes of Israel sent their soldiers to stand with Gideon. And loads and loads and loads of soldiers came. So many, they were hard to count. But Gideon was still worried. He wanted to make sure that God was on his side because he knew he couldn't, even with all these soldiers, he couldn't win the battle unless God was with him. So he decided to test God and he said to God, look, if you really want me to fight against these invaders, then I need to know that we're going to win the battle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, fleece which is the coat of a lamb so the wool of a lamb he said and I'm going to put it on the ground he said and in the morning when the dew comes up I want the fleece to be wet with dew but the ground to be dry and if that happens then I'll know that you're going to help me win this battle and so the next morning he looked and there the fleece was dry Sorry, the, the, yeah, the fleece was uh, wet and the floor was dry. But you know, Gideon still had a few doubts and so he decided 
he was going to test God again. And he said, God, look, just one more test. Just prove to me one more time that what I'm doing means that we're going to win. And so he said, this time, can we turn it around so that instead of the dew being on the fleece, it's going to be on the floor and the fleece will be dry. It's getting very complicated. But God was good and he did exactly what Gideon asked. So the next morning when Gideon looked, the fleece was dry and the floor was wet. And so he knew that God was going to help him win the battle. So he got all the men together and God looked at them and he said, hang on a minute, Gideon, there's too many men, way too many. I want to show you how you can win this fight with me on your side. You don't need this many men. He said, I'll tell you what you must do. You must send home any men that are afraid or feel fearful. And so that's what happened. 22,000 men went back home and that left 10,000. And God said to Gideon, Gideon, that's still too many soldiers. I want there to be less so that you can see how great I am. He said to Gideon, take the men down to the water, the river, he said, and get them to drink. And those that bend down on their knees and drink the water, he said, uh, um, those men I want you to send home. But the men that's, that kneel by the water and use their hands to drink, he said, I want you to keep them. And that's what happened. And do you know how many men Gideon ended up with? He ended up with just 300 men to fight all those Midianites and all those Amalekites. That was quite a scary thing. But God said, don't be afraid, Gideon, because I am with you and the victory is already yours. And to prove it, what I want you to do is at night, I want you to creep down to the camp of the enemy and I want you to listen to what's being said. And so at night when it got dark, Gideon crept down to the enemy army and he listened to what was being said. And he heard two men talking about a dream they'd had. And in this dream, they'd seen how God had helped Gideon win the battle. And so they were very frightened and Gideon knew that that was a confirmation that God was on his side. And then God told him, right, now what you've got to do, Gideon, you've got to get your sword and tell your men to get their swords. And they've got to get an empty jar. And in this jar, they've got to put a light. And when I give the signal, the men who have also got trumpets, each one had a trumpet. When I give the signal, I want you to blow the trumpet and smash the jars and be ready to fight. And that's exactly what happened. The men were all ready. They were holding their swords. They had their jars with lights and they had their trumpets. And Gideon gave the signal and the men blew the trumpets. <laughs> they smashed the jars so the light could be seen. They shouted the sword of the Lord and for Gideon. And then they charged at the enemy. And do you know what happened? The enemy was so scared by the noise and the smashing jars and the lights, they began to fight each other. And then Gideon's men came in and finished them off. And those that they didn't kill ran away as fast as they could. Now you see that God gave Gideon the victory just as he promised. But he also showed Gideon that any battle could be won if you have God on your side. And that sometimes, even if there's big things that come against us, lots of things that come against us, we don't need to be afraid because God can help us win. We're going to sing a song about how great and how mighty our God is, and then we're going to close with a prayer. So here goes. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. My God is so big, 
So strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. The rivers are his, the mountains are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. I want you to remember that, children. No matter what we face, if we believe that God can help us, he will. And we will win the victory over anything that comes against us. So let's pray. Close your eyes, hands together. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for that story of Gideon, how you used him to, to defeat his enemies and how you were with him. Thank you that we don't need to be afraid of anything because you're with us too. And we can overcome anything that comes in our way because you're on our side. Look after our families this week, we pray, and bless us. In Jesus' name, Amen. So there we are, children. Don't forget the story of Gideon. God was on his side. So I will see you next week. Have a really good week. It's going to be a lot of sunshine this week, so make sure you get out and enjoy it. God bless and see you next time. Take care. Bye.